Hello everyone. Well, I thought I'd give you a, a tracker update. Hasn't been one for a while and I'm happy to say that uh, at the moment the only one that's getting the heavy weather is our uh, uh, cyberspace Suhaley right over here. Um, she's got a bit of breeze, but this is also a delayed staggered um, course, just so you know, to explain the Suhaley situation. We've only got a few positions um, when she's actually on track for latitude and longitude, which has been entered into the program. So she skips ahead about every three days or so, uh, sometimes a bit longer, three, four, five days. Um, so Suhaley's having a big race at the moment with Mark Sinclair, and uh, I think in real terms, um, Suhaley's probably a little bit ahead. So anyway, you'll have to uh, look at that when it catches up. So there's the fleet spread across Igor, Mark Sinclair over here. Uh, Loik is now off the program. That was his last known position uh, before the boat sank. Um, Tapio and Isfan here having a go, trying to catch up to Susie. Susie trying to catch up to uh, Uku, who's about to arrive here in Hobart. Um, probably late tomorrow. Mark Slats halfway across the Tasman and uh, Jean-Luc right over here heading towards Cape Horn. And in fact, we can just see now if we uh, pull this across, um, you've got New Zealand here, you've got Cape Horn down the bottom there. Um, this is about halfway, so he's well over a third of the way towards Cape Horn and plenty of green there. Now the green I really like uh, because that means we can get a, a sort of a bit of a snooze at night time. Um, that's moderate weather and we'll look at them all in, in a bit of detail now. We'll start off at the back end of the fleet. So I'll just uh, zoom in here. Uh, very happy that, um, uh, that uh, Igor has managed to get his mask sorted. Uh, we had a phone call from him uh, yesterday, uh, which is on SoundCloud, and their team will be translating that now, and I'd expect to receive it in the next few hours maybe, and we'll get it up so you can read exactly everything that happened. But he certainly sounded pretty uh, happy that that, that uh, whole issue was over. It was quite an epic to get up there and do it, um, but now he's underway. So he's now sailing at 2.5 knots, and by the look of this wind, uh, if we remember, just so you know, if you go down to the bottom of scale here, that wind's about 15 knots uh, by the colour scale. So if the forecast is right, 15 knots, him doing two and a half, I would have thought he'd be actually uh, making a bit better speed than that. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Mark Sinclair making four knots, uh, 4.1 knots. Mark's still sailing conservatively. So if he's doing four knots, I would have thought Igor would have been doing about the same. So we'll hope that um, he gets up to speed. Um, we've got uh, Mark is coming close to Isle Amsterdam here, Isle de Amsterdam, that's, that's where the islands were. And uh, uh, just to uh, look at Gregor's boat, which is drifting, the incidents that happened were down in this region here. Uh, and uh, we've lost track of Tommy's boat. It's still afloat, probably. I'm not sure. It hasn't been uh, recovered by the Indian Navy, so it's adrift. But Gregor's, we've still got a tracker on it. We've got a plot once a day. Um, he's slowly heading towards um, uh, slowly heading towards Australia. Um, we've asked for an official response from that, or uh, RCC Canberra have, to see if uh, what the intention is he here for the boat, whether anyone's going to try and salvage it from Gregor's team. Haven't got an answer yet, but I doubt whether they would. So um, that may turn up in Australia sometime in the future. Just uh, screaming forward here, there's Loik's boat now gone uh, on the bottom. And uh, for Tapio and Istvan, not a lot of breeze. So Tapio is making uh, 1.7 knots. You can see there, big hole. And uh, Istvan, he's doing four knots. Now he reported yesterday um, that his YB3 texting unit uh, was failing to charge. We're not sure what the issue is there. Um, so it's not working. So we've now activated his grab bag YB3 unit. That's the texting unit and backup tracker. Uh, this position comes off his YB3i, which is permanent tracker on the back of the boat, which everyone uses. Um, so uh, Istvan's certainly running out of lock in a whole series of areas. He's only got, he lost one of his uh, satellite, satellite phones as well in the big uh, flood and knockdowns he had uh, some weeks ago. So he's down to one satellite phone and one texting unit at the moment as well as lots of other little things. He lost his impeller on his um, towing log and uh, yeah, generally getting a bit miffed about the fact that everything seems to be building up and going wrong. Um, Tapio is having a good time, uh, sent another message uh, enjoying the, uh, the sail. And Susie certainly very happy to be getting some uh, light weather and calm seas. She's got a bit of fog this morning, she was saying, uh, low visibility, a bit grey and overcast, but certainly enjoying the calmness of it all. And Uku just sent us a message, it was quite funny, I don't think he knows where he is. Uh, he's about, uh, uh, about 200 miles, not quite 200 miles from Hobart. 
and he thought he'd be in early tomorrow morning, um, but he'll soon find out that that's not the case. Uh, he's got a bit further to go than he expects. He thought he was only 100 miles from Southwest Cape. We'll just zoom in on this and um, hang on, I'll just uh, come up, oh, go back here again, scroll that down. We'll just uh, zoom in because this is the next boat coming through. Going to arrive right on top of the Route de Rum race, so um, all French eyes will be turned on the start of that. Uh, and uh, here we go, we'll just do a distance measure. We'll put one marker there, one marker down here. Come on, where's the other? There it is. Okay, here's Southwest Cape, just here. And Uku right now is 150 miles from uh, Southwest Cape. And then to go up to uh, Kingston Beach, uh, bearing in mind he's got to go around the corner, it's probably an equivalent distance of about there, but another 60 miles after that. So we're hoping he gets in first uh, before dark on Friday. And we don't want him to come in on Saturday because every arrival has been a disaster for Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania because uh, the first one, uh, John Luke, arrived on their opening day, the biggest day of the year. And uh, when Mark's uh, slats came through, that was just about as bad. They had survival courses on, they had the uh, uh, start of their races and all sorts of things, but they were able to give us the boats that we needed, which is fantastic. Um, so uh, Uku, the next person into the boatshed.com uh, film drop, and we'll look forward to seeing him tomorrow night, uh, hopefully uh, in the daylight so we can see him. Uh, so if we zoom back here, Mark uh, Slats having a fantastic time yesterday, surfing in good sailing conditions, um, halfway across the Tasman now, or past halfway point. But he's got light winds, 3.9 knots, um, still a chance to regroup. He did have that fast sail yesterday, and um, we'll have a look now. Uh, over here, Jean-Luc is uh, just doing what Jean-Luc does and continuing on his way without any dramas, no fuss. And you notice here, if I, if I give you the, uh, I'll just blow it up again here, he looks as if he's in the same stuff, right? He's got green. Um, it's really sort of pretty ordinary. And you'd think he'd be doing about three and a half, four knots, bingo. He's doing five and a half knots. Now I've got to say a general impression I have with Jean-Luc is that every time I look at him in similar weather, he's always doing a knot faster, about average. You know, every time you look at him, I say, oh yeah, he'll be doing this. And you look, I say, whoa, he's still going faster. So uh, he's not letting the pressure up at all. He's going for it. So uh, uh, kind of interesting. So we'll come back a bit and we'll follow this group here and see what happens to the wind um, as we move forward get rid of the distance measure. So this is um, basically one o'clock in the morning, UTC 25th. We'll go forward 12 hours and see what happens. Um, come on, there we go. Okay, not a lot happening for Jean-Luc, the same. Mark's gonna get a nice breeze again, kick from the northwest. So he'll pick up speed. Uku's got breeze all the way into Hobart until the last six hours, then it's a, uh, another wind shadow. So that's day one. Uh, we'll go forward to, oh, the, the, that's 24 hours. Again, Mark's got a nice breeze, Jean-Luc. So for the next 24 hours, it's okay. We'll go forward uh, 24 hour, another 24 hours. Looks good, Mark's not worried, Jean-Luc's not worried, Uku's gonna be in by then and have a good kick uh, coming up. So that's cool, they've got two days. I hope you can see all this. Um, and uh, again here, I'll just uh, push this up one size because I know some of you are on mobiles. Uh, there we go, we'll just focus on this. Hopefully you can see this. Again, uh, Mark's gonna have a southerly, but by then he'll be down here, so he might be starting to run out of it. But um, no huge storms coming through, come through another day. All looking good, Jean-Luc will be across here. So it looks like pretty much a week of um, reasonable conditions. Um, yep, good stuff for Mark. So these guys at the, in the lead, no big storms, I'm happy about that. Just good solid sailing breezes and they'll be as happy as. So let's just kick it back to real time now. Um, so we're back to real time now. We'll look at the, the middle fleet here. I'll just zoom it up as big as I can to get the lot. I think that's all we'll get because we'll lose them, yeah. Um, so hopefully you can see that happening there. And um, this is now, we've been through that. So we'll come forward a day and see what we've got here. Okay, this is a day later. Great breezes, they're all gonna be happy with that. Consistent, moderate to light winds, the seas died down, having a great time. So that's uh, one day, we'll go forward another day. 
Uh, what do we got? Oop, a bit of a hole for Susie, but she could be through some of that. It's going to be light headwinds, maybe. Um, Uku's fine. He'll get in with that. Oh, these guys are light, so they're going to slow down. Crikey's, they better not go too slow because we have to leave on the 10th of November. Um, we come through another day. Hopefully, it'll start to fill in. Oop, that's not looking good. <laughs> um, Tapio and Istvan are not going to go long distances. I think Susie will be okay. She'd be hooked up into this by then, so she's underway again. So uh, that's the 28th, that's three days ahead. Uh, we go through another one. Yeah, plenty of breeze, no storms, just plenty of northwesterlies, but that means usually there's something coming from the southwest later on. That's four days out. Let's go through to five days. Um, no, all good. We'll go through for six days and seven days. Nice breezes, okay. So the guys are gonna, everyone's gonna be on the move. And so I'd say the projection for Susie is around the first or the second. I think that's that's reasonable at this stage. Istvan and um, uh, Tapio, they'll be matching uh, her times, I reckon, within reason. So let's just have a look and see how far behind they are. Uh, right now, um, Istvan is about 300 miles behind. He's going to lose ground in those calms there, might lose another 50, so about 350 miles. Two and a half days or so. So after Susie comes in, two and a half, three days, we might see Istvan. And depending on how quick he is with um, Tapio, Tapio is 120 miles behind now. That's, that's pretty interesting because um, they were side by side just days ago. So Tapio's lost ground there. So you can say that's another day. So they should all be in before we leave on the 10th, which is cool. Um, that's kind of nice. So they've got a reasonable week by the look of it. And uh, just a final one. Let's see what's happening with Mark Sinclair and so on. We'll um, bring them back to uh, uh, bring them back to real time now. Okay, this is their weather. Bit of wind down here for Suhaili, but what's going to happen to it? So we'll go forward a day, uh, 24 hours later, near enough. No, good breezes. They should keep moving quite well. The heavy stuff's below them, which is what we like to see. Uh, we'll go through to the 27th. Uh, what do we got? Uh, yep, nice breezes again. No excuses there. Hopefully Igor is going to make some serious easting there. And um, day three, yeah, they could be right because Igor might be over here by then, but he could, could get caught with some light stuff. Um, hopefully Mark will stay down in this region and keep moving. Should be okay. Another day forward. Yeah, all looking good. No storms, that's the main thing. But Igor might be stuck in some calms unless he gets a little bit southeast. Uh, that's a couple of days ahead of that. Uh, let's see what happens. Come on, just waiting for it to refresh. Doesn't want to do that. Um, there we go. Whoops, where did that come from? Let's go back and have a look. This is the 31st, so that's um, uh, six days from now. It's probably too early to worry about. Um, but it could be, because it all changes. These little fast, short ones that come up, uh, you never know what they're gonna do, but you can see this is starting to form up into a, into a, um, a depression here, low, a low pressure system. And uh, we'll see what the forecast is for it. Come forward a few hours, that's just a few hours. Okay, looks like the worst of it's gonna be up high. Yeah, it's going up high. This is a danger zone. We'll keep an eye on it for Uku when, he, for Uku when he's, uh, Igor rather, when he's coming across and let him know. But it is a bit too far ahead to worry about. It'll, it'll change completely. So pretty good day today, uh, next day, next day. Fleet's happy, I'm happy, and uh, we'll see you again later on. Thanks a lot.